Hello, my name is Blake, and today I will be walking you through modeling the, well, this thing you see right here in front of you. We're going to be using 3ds Max 8, but you, pretty much any version of 3ds Max should be fine. But I'll do pretty much the exact same thing. 3ds Max 8 has a few more tools than 7 or any of the earlier versions, but they're pretty insignificant, so you shouldn't have any problem. As you can see, I created this model ahead of time, so I'd have a reference for myself when modeling it again for this tutorial. I tend to model pretty slowly because I think a lot about what my next step should be, because I usually don't have a concept before I begin modeling, so I make up everything as I go. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but as you can see it worked out pretty good this time so I think this is an adequate model for uh, recreating for you guys okay so first thing you want to do is create a box primitive just click and drag it out I'm gonna make it pretty much the same size as that so I'm just going to decrease the units and stuff like that I'll tell you what I'll just do that when I pause the video so I don't take up your time basically you just want to convert that to an editable poly a lot of people use editable mesh but I don't like it it doesn't have all the tools that edible poly does and I just find it a lot easier to use this so select your box flip the normals so all your faces are facing the inside delete the go into polygon mode delete the front and back faces so it's more of a tunnel as you can see and then um, then you can begin modeling Okay, what I just did right now was pause the video and then bring out this box I created earlier that has the same dimensions on, same dimensions as that one right there. So I wouldn't have to bore you guys with trying to find all the, you know, dimensions that the box should be. Alright, this thing right here, I'm not actually going to be modeling off of this. It's just reference for myself. So it doesn't really have anything to do with the tutorial. Basically, I'm going to be creating a level piece that can be tiled or basically just seamlessly copied over and over again. As you can see, that makes a fairly good thing. Although after time, that would be an extremely boring model, so you need to add some variety to it, but that's up to you. Okay, so I'm going to begin modeling this thing. We're going to turn this box into that complex object. So, begin with your box. Connect these two edges right here to, wait, sorry. Go into edge selection mode. Select these two edges on this wall. Go into the connect button, the little box beside it. What the connect tool does is it basically serves the same purpose as the cut tool, but it makes the lines perfectly horizontal or vertical depending on the two edges you selected. And when you have more than one cut in there, it approximates where to put the cuts based on what's halfway or third way or fourth way or so on. So it's very useful. I hardly ever use the cut tool and I use this instead. So anyway, create two segments that'll turn that one polygon into three of them delete the middle face and just to make it easier for myself I'm going to copy the height of this edge right here to match that one and that edge to match that one just so it'll be easier for me 
usually you would make all these decisions as you go and that's exactly what I did for that model over there but this just makes it a lot quicker for myself so what I'm doing right now is I'm copying the coordinates on the z-axis so I know where to place this edge right here I'm just copying and pasting it there to put it at the same height as that edge over there and I'm doing the exact same thing for the top copy paste enter so it's the same now select the two edges click on the extrude button and you're going to want to extrude it 20, negative 25 units it was positive 25 units it will be sticking out the other way but we don't want that so make it negative 25 go down and click the little box actually no you don't even need to click the box just click the bridge button that will connect these two edges with a face it's you can do the exact same thing with the polygon creation tool but this is a lot quicker as you could just see to get that semi rounded edge around the this 90 degree angle right here we're going to use the chamfer tool I'm not exactly sure how you're supposed to pronounce that but just hang in with me here so click the little box beside it and then do it by a unit of 10 click OK and as you can see it's already looking better now we're going to add these little hole things in the um, side which is basically drainage or something honestly I don't even know what I modeled here I'm assuming it's some kind of boiler room or something of that sort just sort of a mixed concept I created from other concepts it's not the best but it'll work okay so con to create these two go back to your model select these two edges right here go down and connect them once that will put an edge down the middle select these two polygons you're going to want to inset them and that just creates a polygon in the center and connects it at the side as you can see we're going to do an insight inset type of by polygon because if you did group it would connect the two like that but we don't want that so do by polygon inset amount of 12.5 click OK and then we're going to want to delete the faces below it and so we can connect this to the bottom we want to insert vertices on this bottom edge here on the floor And then we want to find out the height coordinate of this, which is 12.5, and copy and paste it to that. And the same over here. Now, as you can see, that looks like it's acceptable, but it's really not because these two edges aren't connected. That would create an error that could be, that is sometimes passed by by new people who don't know you're supposed to connect everything so we're going to use the target weld tool and weld those vertices I just created earlier to these bottom ones I just lowered all the way around now just check your triangulation by going into polygon mode edit triangulation and you'll see these lines that represent the triangles which make up the geometry everything should be connected in an orderly manner and as you can see everything is so we're doing good so far another way you can check that you have no open edges in your model is by going into border, border selection mode and simply highlighting your entire model and it will highlight every open edge that you have in your model it's a very useful tool 
Okay, now we're going to do a little cleanup around this air right here because you can see there's unnecessary polygons wasted. First, we're going to clean up these edges. So, I'm just going to select all these edges that aren't ne necessarily need. Well, actually, these ones right here aren't hurting anything, but this middle one just doesn't need to be here. Same as these two right here. What I'm doing to delete them without deleting the whole model like that is using the backspace key. Now I'm going to create um, some new edges. So the triangulation. Oh wait, never mind. I forgot. I have to. Just because I delete the edges doesn't mean that the vertices don't remain. So you have to do the same thing with them. Get the backspace. And. Hold on. Backspace and get rid of them. I go back in the edge mode. And create some. Edges to connect everything. Hmm. Actually, not quite yet, because I just remembered I need to do something else. I'm simply going to get rid of all the edges so I don't have to deal with them for now. Alright. Alright, now what we want to do is make these two polygons smaller so we can pretty much shape them into the shape we have right here. So go into your scale tool and decrease its size on the x axis by 75, I mean 25%. And then to put some space in between these two polygons, I'm going to select one, right click the select and move button, and then go into offset world and subtract five units from it. As you can see that pushed it over a little bit. Now I want to do the same thing with this except I want it to move in the opposite direction so I'm going to do plus five units or just five. Alright, now that stats done. Select the two newly created polling. Actually uh, one thing before that you want to make sure this top edge is exactly halfway in between this edge and this edge. So what we do to find out that is just select this edge right here and copy its coordinates which is 26.25 and copy and paste that into the top edges right here. That will make it so it's exactly halfway up the wall. So take the two newly created polygons, go into the extrude tool, and extrude it by 15 units, negative 15 units that is. Now to give it that curved edge that we did up here, simply select the top edges of these boxes go into the chamfer tool and okay we well seem to have some problem here let me try to fix it real quick seems as though the problem is this triangulation so I'm gonna create some edges real quick it seems as though those edges I deleted earlier pop maybe were necessary so I'm just going to create those real quick and that should solve all the problems so go back and select those top edges go into the chamfer tool and enter a unit of I think it's about 10, hold on 